Hello guys, just going here and welcome back to building the Beeksbergen. What do we have over here? There's a little floating leaf or <laughs> branch. Interesting. Welcome back to building the Beeksbergen. <laughs> and today we are going to continue where we left off in the last episode. Now in the last episode we built this little staff area. Which is kind of hidden behind this little guest seat area, and the staff has a little place to keep animals. Off camera, I added this little feeding station to it. And on the other side, the staff has actually walkable paths, and there is some staff rooms hidden inside of these things. And we have what's going to be the entrance of the keepers into the pelican habitat. However, I did eventually. Uh, get stuck a little bit in placing down the fence because I didn't really have clear pictures of this area. I will be visiting the zoo again in about five days from recording this. Uh, so that will probably be still within this episode that I'll be able to make some better pictures and kind of tackle this. So before we get into this area uh, we're gonna move our attention over to the Africa village and we're gonna be working on this little area for the springbok as well as something that I have basically forgotten about, the aviaries in the Africa village. We have one aviary over here, as well as one over here. All the fencing is in place, but the netting above it, as well as the kind of branches and plants that are inside here, are still missing. So yeah, I just saw some people enter this building. Oh yeah put an ATM in here. So yeah, it's uh, time that we get to those, I think, because if we do that, then the Africa village is going to be pretty much done, unless I forgot about something else. I think that's actually the last thing that needs to happen in here, so yeah, that would be pretty great. Okay, so what's pretty interesting here is that I have used the trick of one of my tutorials to remove all the poles in the chain link fence over here. So we have this postless a chain link barrier around the aviary and what we can do now is take these thin logs and place them on the inside and that makes it look like this aviary is supposed to and what's also nice is that I can now use these actual thin logs rather than the chain link post which is quite thick I can't hide those in there so yeah that's pretty cool and of course, for reference, this is what the aviary looks like normally. So you've got these pretty thin logs. There's a thicker log in the middle. And uh, yeah, it will work towards the center like that. Okay, so I have the frame in place. But I am on the fence of what to do with the filling in of the roof bit. It is meant to be this very fine mesh chain link, which is actually also what's supposed to be on sides but we don't really have anything in the game that can make that uh, the rope pieces are too thick the plank pieces are kind of too thick and also I can't get them up into that corner um, the bunting ropes that we use over here um, would be nice but they are too long to be put there so yeah that leaves us with really no options other than hoping that we ever get chain link pieces that fit in here or, or something like that. So I'm just gonna put some rocks and sticks in here and then call it quits. I did however finish the other one over here. I did use the ropes, doesn't look super great but again the bunting ropes are too big so there really aren't that many options. And yeah it's a bit more messy than our usual aviary just because of how small it is but we do have a bunch of plants and stuff in here this is kind of how the other one is going to look as well except a lot less lush uh, this habitat is filled with, with bamboo plants and we've got these ivy uh, overgrown ivy um, sticks and then some other branches around and with that it actually looks a lot like what it is uh, meant to look like so What's also pretty cool is these um, these bamboo sticks. If you, you put the fountain bamboo upside down, you get these nice um, yeah spikes of bamboo, which look pretty cool. But yeah, other than that, there isn't really much to look at here. 
All right, that last clip was recorded about a week and a half ago, so we are back now. I had a bunch of stuff to do with my family and, and things alike, but now we are back here and I've actually got some really good news. Uh, I have passed my semester long project at university, uh, so that means that for me the summer vacation has officially begun. Now in about a week and a half I will be going on a Boy Scouts camp. So I'll be away for a week, but other than that, I'll have plenty of time to work on this project and some other things as well, hopefully. So yeah, you will be, hopefully, see a bit of a spike in, uh, in video production again. Can't make any promises. I do have a life beside Planet Zoo, but yeah. Let's jump into some of the things I have been doing in the past week. Um, I've been at my house with my girlfriend, so and every now and then I did have some time uh, to play Planet Zoo with myself, so uh, we haven't really made any progress on. Oh, haven't really made any progress on the aviary at all. I think that's next on my list. But I went to the zoo again and made a bunch of pictures of the pelican habitat and the red river hog habitat. Haven't started on the red river hogs yet, but we will this episode. Um, I've been working on. on the pelicans. So let's slowly get there. So over here we've got some more foliage around this toilet building which also had a bunch of detail missing so I've kind of put that in. Um, back here I've already marked out some spots for the springbok habitat with these little bits of shelter. Um, they're gonna look very differently but it's just, uh, just a marker. And yeah more foliage and these little rope fences and if we look through here, we can see the rhino stall in the back there. Um, still need a bunch more foliage here. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to the springbok habitat. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that this episode as well. Would be nice though, would be nice. Anyway, let's come over here and we've got our first view into the pelican habitat. And what we can see from over here is kind of the uh, open view of the back side of the habitat. And there's a bunch of trees all around. Uh, but mainly just a lot of grass and I'm, I'm gonna put a bit more detail here in regards to like little plants and bushes but most of it is actually uh, ready but the coolest thing about this habitat is down here uh, we have a little adventure trail like we have in many places in the zoo and this one actually just goes down here you can see that it's a functional path people are walking over it uh, there's also a piece connecting it over here and yeah it goes through over here but from here you've got a lovely view into the habitat and you can see a bunch of our pelicans <laughs> they're flamingos but uh, yeah they're they're acting out as pelicans and uh, yeah they're having a nice swim now i do want to put a bunch more in here because we've got about eight and there definitely should be a lot more uh, of them but yeah, this is a really, really cool path. And it is uh, built up out of two meter paths. I actually got a bunch of questions from people like, oh, did you just put down people and remove the path to make the screenshot or something? But no, no, it's a functional path. Um, and this will show you that. So it's, it's a two meter path uh, by kind of using the queue and then putting down these little sections over here to prevent the little logs from showing. Oh, someone's been boxed up. But yeah, we, I've used these little kind of sections over here to get rid of those uh, little pillars uh, on the curb of the natural path and I've kind of hidden them away in this rock work that kind of looks like dirt. And yeah, we've got people looking into the uh, pelican habitat from over here, which is really, really cool. Now I did add a bunch of plants to my plant palette over here, most notably these uh, mangrove apple trees, which, I don't know, I don't think they look too tropical, and they're just a nice addition of like a kind of thin but still pretty thick small tree um, to add in here. This area is a bit bland, I should add more um, bushes, but yeah, if we go along the path, We've got this small little bridge with some water flowing underneath there. We still had that from when we last built this area. 
and it flows underneath the path into the lake. Uh, we can see the flamingos are walking about. There's also over here, there's a bit of a drainage pipe dumping water in. Uh, that's there in real life as well. Which, that's why I incorporated that. It's, it's just a little detail I noticed while at the zoo. I don't actually often see water flow down here, but just to keep things a bit interesting, I did put it in. And yeah, when we continue along the path here, you can either go to the elephant field or um, past the playground. Here is going to be the giraffe field in the future, but on this side, we've got another view into that pelican habitat. I really, really like, like even though it's very simple and just open air, Habitat, the lushness of it, and the fact that you can't really see the other viewing areas from over here. You might occasionally see people walk over there, but that's about it. Yeah, I really am a pretty big fan of uh, what this habitat turned out to be. What's kind of interesting as well uh, about this little building that we had, I kind of snuck behind here and took some pictures. And uh, I could see there were like these plastic things like we have in the aviary. Uh, the wetland aviary and I connected this up to the staff gate so over here the staff will come into the habitat and they will walk out through here to come inside the habitat and uh, interact with the animals and over here is kind of their their netted off area which has these little fences as well as this gate over here I thought this was a fence well I in, in, at first but it turned out it was a gate and I actually made it a functional gate, which is pretty interesting. <laughs> Not that I'll ever use it, but it was fun to make. But yeah, that is the habitat of the pelicans. Just needs a little bit more planting detail here and there, but the bulk of it is done. So with that done, we are going to move to the springbok habitat and finish off this last little section over here. We've got some natural paths to kind of hide and we've got this area to put down a fence, put down these little shelters and put down some Scots pine trees that are all over the place here. Uh, oh yeah, and also this fence needs some, uh, some work. So yeah, there's a lot to do, so let's get to it so that maybe we can also get to the Red River Hawk at the end of the episode. Okay then, here we are at the Springbok field, and let's take a bit of a look over here. We've got a nice little viewing platform, um, akin to the one at the elephant field. It's kind of similar, except that this one has a ramp going up to it. And um, before we had this staircase over here as an actual path staircase, but I decided against doing that because it was not functional anyway, because guests can't walk on two meter staircases. And yeah, the real staircase looks a bit more like this. So I thought I would just make it so that it looks a bit more accurate. From over here, you've got a view into this area, which has, oh, which has a bit more space for the Springbok to go around in, uh, section off by these wooden poles. A little bit of shelter. I actually wonder, can they use that shelter? I haven't checked that yet. Why is it not showing me the traversable area? Oh, you're stuck. <laughs> Poor little thing. <laughs> Get away from there. That should do you better. Yes. Great. Okay, they can actually go in there. Is it also a shelter? It actually is. That's great. Oh, I like that. It really couldn't have made it any smaller by the looks of it. So that's that's cool. So yeah, over here is a bit of a, a foresty area with all these Scots pine kind of divided off by the fence that is connected to the pelican habitat back here. Oh god, they're breeding. So yeah, back here it has a little bit of a different kind of fence and there are some openings in there that allows the uh, springbok to go inside. And then we are back at the back of this little staff area, which could use a little bit more detailing, but I mean, you're not really ever gonna see it unless you're really gonna take the camera back there. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot of detailing, just a little bit of, um, yeah, neatening it up, probably. 
But yeah, that is the Springbok field, like 99% finished. I'm never going to say something is 100% finished because I'll probably always find like little bits of detail and foliage to add. <coughs> but the real bulk of it is complete now. So we are going to move to the next bit. I just have to finish this last bit, small aviary over here. Oh. Alright, so I just recorded a pretty large section of the video, but apparently my mic was turned off. So, uh, now there's still plenty of time left in the episode. But I do have some more things to show you, I guess, because I have been working again. So let's, uh, let's dive into the stuff. So over here, we have the final Africa Village Aviary. Could use a little bit more detail around, but yeah, it's, it's very simple. Just some rocks, some foliage. Uh, no animal fits in here, so... We're not going to put one as of yet. Maybe if we ever get like small birds or something else, then we will. But for now, that's just that. Uh, so let's move to through here. Let's just go take our little adventure route that we like so much. And then ooh, go all the way around until we're back at the elephant habitat. Or the elephant stall, rather. And I really really love this area. It's it's nice and lush, but it's not... Uh, I, don't, I just really like it. Um, but let's move through here, because this is where I have been working, because you might remember this is where the um, Red River Hog habitat is, together with the Zebra Mongoose. Um, now we're just going to put some Warthog in there. If we ever end up using mods, then I know there is a mod to replace Warthog with Red River Hog, so we might do that. But for now let's just go over the changes. So over here I've been adding a lot of foliage, this little section over here, also cleaning up some of the natural path. Uh, looks like I have to do a bit of a repaint here. But yeah, over here is the staff gate into this staff area that I've started to lay out a little bit and kind of mark out where buildings are going to be that I haven't marked out yet. But this area is uh, not really what we're going to be working on today, I don't think. It's kind of a backstage area anyway. I've instead been working just on this path, on the trees that you can see over here. A little <laughs> bouncy trees. <laughs> and where we are arriving now, the habitat has been kind of started to be laid out. Now these paths are a pain. I've had to redo a bunch of it to make it kind of fit. Uh, but we got some two and three meter paths around just so that we can work with these splits of the path. You'll see in the reference, uh, you'll see in the comparison pics at the end of the episode that yeah, the, the path splits over here. So yeah, it was a lot of fiddling around to make that happen. But I think, I think I've got it at the good, uh, at a good point now. And we've got these windows over here, uh, this little ridge, and yeah, that is kind of the habitat. Then in the back here is the entrance to the habitat, uh, which is a little shelter. And now it is up to us to kind of finish off the last bit of foliage here and then do the habitat. So it's really not that much anymore. Um, so I'm just gonna jump in and do that. All right, here we are and some progress has been made and we are looking at them getting some food from the keeper who is completely ignoring the enrichment item I put in the ground, so they probably can't reach it. There is no habitat to it. Uh, it's probably because it's like below the ground. Yeah, now it's working. Okay, I wonder if they're gonna be able to reach that, because that would be cool, because then you'll see them like move around <laughs> into the ground. But <laughs> you can already tell that a lot has changed here. Um, not only do we have the animals in, but we've also got all the foliage pretty much finished off. Except for the backside. So let's go through it from over here. So we have that pathway behind the elephant stall building. And yeah, there's just all tons of foliage. It's re it was a real pain to do. It's so small out here, like, um, yeah, real tiny amount of space between the fence and 
this path. I've kind of ignored this path, to be honest. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going to be impossible otherwise, really, because I, I didn't want any plants clipping through the fence. So that's why, um, I mean, I failed, but yeah, uh, that's why I kind of ignored this path, which is a bit of a shame, but I don't know. I don't think there's much to do about it. So yeah, we've got that split in the path with some um, spruce trees. Bouncy boys. I mean, they're bouncy because they're like this freaking tall. But we just used the tip so that it looks like a tiny tree, which works really well. But then you got that split in the path so people can actually stand over here to look into the habitat as well. Then over here the path splits again and you've got this little viewing area without the glass. And then there's this little area. Oh, it looks like this didn't go very well. Might have to retry this path. But um, yeah, the path and all is functional and works really well. So now it's time to just do the backside, do the habitat, and then we'll be done. So I just got a freaking heart attack when I placed this playing the freaking warthog just teleported on top of the thing. That scared the crap out of me. <laughs> All right then, let's finish up the episode here. We have completed the habitat of the uh, red river hog or warthog that we use for them. And it ended up looking pretty freaking cool. Uh, the use of rocks and such has been, has been very nice. Uh, the only thing I haven't really been able to recreate, which you'll see come back in the reference photos in just a bit is that there is actually kind of like holes underneath this little ridge here uh, where the zebra mangoosts uh, kind of dug a lot and yeah there's holes all over the place where they dig and, and make their um, yeah their little holes burrows but this habitat is finished and you can also see that the trees here in the back have been put down. They are nice and sturdy. Now back here is going to be the road, the exit road of the car safari. So we won't be getting to that in a long time because I'm not sure how soon we're going to be working on the giraffe habitat and the staff buildings that kind of link up to that. This entire area is also not going to be touched anytime soon because the bus stop is closed. Uh, due to the corona restrictions and this area over here is entirely a staff area so I have no idea when or if I'll ever be able to get good reference photos of those maybe if the zoo ever wants to team up with me <laughs> that would be great uh, I'd, I'd love to check out this area uh, among others but yeah I did have a little start on this staff area over here uh, I had like one picture I took uh, by peeking like, in between the the fence like this and that showed this big old tanker over here surrounded by a fence and there's some dumpsters around there as I can see on Google Maps. So yeah, that's just a bit more backstage detailing. But that is just about it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end uh, we're about to show some reference photos of the various things that we built this episode which is quite a lot actually so uh, hopefully there is a lot to show you it's probably gonna be a pretty long screenshot section but um, yeah i hope you'll enjoy those for now though i'm gonna sign off here once again thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next episode